Hi friends, welcome, welcome back to today's video. My name is Madison and today I just wanted to share with you guys what my garden plans are for this upcoming season and just the year of 2024. So feel free to stick around. I go through everything. I am in zone 8A for reference and hope you all enjoy it. All right guys, hopefully you can hear me, but this is what we are currently working with for the garden. We have the two beds from last year in the trellis. There is an apple tree over here. Take you guys over. And then we have my peach tree, another apple tree, and then another apple tree over here. Because if you were here for the dilemma of which varieties cross pollinate, let's just say we ended up with three because we thought we had it the first go around with just the two. guys it is a few days later i have tried to film this outside so many times and quite frankly it's just too windy and or just all the kids and the animals make it just too loud to film so i hope you don't mind me coming from my living room to share with you guys my garden plans for this year we are in garden zone 8a which is kind of like middle southern georgia at least for me anyways and here is my current layout of my garden. It's the same as last year. If you can see it, it's the two big garden beds. Little ones being the two foot by four foot and then the four foot by eight foot. If you can see that little in the middle, that's the trellis that I currently have set up. But then obviously the second garden bed. The one thing I do need to make note of is that this garden bed still actually manages to have rosemary and onions growing, even though I was pretty sure I pulled all of that out last year. So I guess that's kind of a happy surprise that it's made it all the way through the winter with no intervention from me whatsoever. But I figured today I would share with you guys my plans. Over the last week or so, I've been doing more research as to the best times to plant everything that I have seeds for. So again, my handwriting is atrocious. Please don't judge me. Actually, feel free to judge. It is truly horrible. But I have things from February all the way through August as of right now, the one thing I've learned with the planting season here is that while you can do something sooner, in many ways it may be better to wait simply because of the pest issue and if you don't want to put too much effort into that. Things like squash, for example, I've been recommended to wait till later in the season to plant. That way you don't have to deal with like the pesky vine borers and all those awful things that we were dealing with last year because by then that breeding season should have already happened and been done with. So hopefully we can actually get a good harvest this year if we plant later. But as of right now, this is everything that I have that I'm planning to start propagating and planting here in February. It is now February the 2nd. I think when I started this video, it was late January. So I need to start planting some radish, arugula, carrot, purple carrot, some cayenne peppers, the cherry peppers, poblano peppers, spinach, lettuce, jalapenos, bell peppers, green peppers. So if you were around last year for that garden, this is not as easy for you guys to see, I'm sure. But this right here was my left garden bed. This one was the one on the right. So my entire left garden bed when you were facing in the garden was essentially a pepper bed through here, squashes all down the left hand side and then any other winter squashes and trellising plants over here on the right since it connected over. So my plan is, is to largely keep that the same but just get a head on planting this year since I did not plant those until late March last year, which for around here is apparently just too hot. It kills pepper plants and I can honestly attest to that because those are the smallest pepper plants I have ever grown. Even though they did manage to produce a fair amount for the size that they were considering, I think the tallest pepper plant was maybe at best a foot tall. And I got a decent harvest, but nothing compared to normal. 
And again, I repeat, I'm still new to this garden zone. This will be my first full season for the most part, considering I didn't completely have my garden set up last year until late May. So I'm hoping to learn more and grow more this year and hopefully share all that knowledge with you guys too for any of you that are in the 8A or similar regions. Maybe this is helpful or maybe this just inspires you to get into gardening because truly it is one of my favorite pastimes in the world. That's where it's like everything fades away and it's just you in nature tending to the garden and just like I can let my mind wander in so many ways and I feel like I've had my best thoughts out in the garden or simply in nature as a whole. But I'm going to go through and start figuring out where everything needs to go because I want to get the best harvest this year. So I need to see how many times I can rotate each of these and then see when to replace them from the early spring winter planting season on into summer. And I need to go get my dogs. I'm sure you probably just heard that. One second. <laughs> All right, dogs are in. We should be good. But I wanted to show you guys. This is my giant sh shoebox full of seeds. Some of which have been given to me from friends throughout the years. Quite a bit were given to me from a garden class that I went to back in Kentucky. I will recommend that if you have any kind of garden agricultural center near you, sometimes they often have garden classes either free of charge or at a very low cost. I think I paid $10 to go to mine back in Kentucky, which was super helpful at the time. And they also gave me like three massive um, paper lunch bags full of seeds. I still have some of them from five years ago, three, four, uh, it was quite a few years ago. Some of which are even older than that. But I have a lot of seeds that I'm just super excited to try out this year, especially some of the new ones to me, like a little, le Ooh, there it is. <laughs> a little lemon cuke. This is one that a good friend gave to me. She gave me a whole bunch of these from the Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I will say, she's a little bit more advanced gardening here down in Georgia. She's been doing it a little bit longer than I and has a lot more help with friends. I'm slowly getting into that friend group and I know with time they will be such a huge resource for me. So that is something that I also recommend is that if you have or have found people that also love gardening in your area, to befriend them because they always have tips and tricks that are going to be helpful to you. Because things like all the pests around here I had no idea about quite frankly until throughout the season. And I often found myself reaching out to quite a few of them looking for help as to how to get rid of the vine borers, what they do for natural pest treatments, so on and so forth. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and look on the back of the seeds because it usually says like the plant spacing. Let's see if you can see that on there. Does not want to focus. All right. Well, for example, for the lemon kooks, they need a spacing of 18 to 36 inches apart. I honestly don't know if this is one that is a trellising type of plant, so I will do some research on that and come back with all of my plans for where things are going to go in my garden this year and what my plans are for the rotation. So give me about 30 minutes to an hour and I will hopefully be back with you guys with more information. So this is what we have so far, which contains most of the plantings for February. So this is going to be our green section. This down here will most likely be lettuce. I need to write that in. I'll probably leave one, maybe two of these square foot for possibilities. And then we have our peppers, still adding in some here. Again, trellis. We have all of our radish, Swiss chard. These two are new for me this year. Purple carrot, regular carrot, some green onion, probably in both of these, I'm thinking. Still figuring that out. And then this entire bed, if you can still see the line of each of those smaller beds, will be a mixture of herbs. 
currently right here. There is still some remaining rosemary from last year's harvest. And then just to make it easier for myself as a reference guide, I'm going in and writing when everything is going to be ready to harvest, how much it needs to, or how it needs to be thinned. And eventually I'll write in with a different color pen or something, how many times we can replant or succession plant before I need to stop and replace it with whatever the summer planting will be. All right guys, it's probably about 30 minutes to an hour later. I did throw my hair up, it was just driving me nuts and my cat just kept pulling on it. So that's why I look a little different. But I wanted to show you guys and I've kind of briefly updated you. I've completely filled in my plans for all of my February planting as well as some of my March planting just because I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put things since I am trying out a few new items this year, including cabbage, Brussels sprouts, radish, Swiss chard. I've done carrots before, but I haven't done carrots here in Georgia. So that's kind of a new one for this zone over here on the left-hand side, which I'm gonna take you guys outside after this and show you everything in the garden. Personally, I like to take all of these seed packets and place them where they're going to go just to get a more accurate visual representation of what things are going to look like. Then I can also just do the math in my head too of how many times I can harvest each thing hopefully before replanting it with whatever is needed for the summer. I don't know if I will be having to rotate that much out considering last year I made this entire center bed a pepper bed because we were just in a huge pepper kick between jalapeno and just honestly lots of bell peppers to use in salads, stir fries, stuffed peppers, so on and so forth. But instead of making it one full four by eight foot bed of peppers, I'm just going to reduce it into, what is that, a three foot by four foot section instead. So that's my plan. Hopefully that'll work out. And then I'm leaving this open. I think I may transfer all of the, um, what am I thinking? <laughs> oh, sorry, all of the summer squash that I had over here on the left-hand side from last year into this bottom section. That way they are such large plants that maybe I can space them out just a little bit better. And if they do hang on over into these beds, it won't be that much of a deal since I'll probably end up replacing these late to mid spring slash summer to replace four more zucchini and yellow squash. But to start off, we'll have them here and then over here as well. And then I'm leaving these open right here. These are those two middle beds where the trellis is connected for all of those trellising plants. I still am researching those lemon kooks that I found. I've seen some people say that you can trellis them. They just don't trellis themselves. So we will see, I'll keep you guys updated. Now this is just episode one of gardening this year. I think you guys seem to enjoy that video. I still see quite a few of you guys finding your way to it now. And hopefully this year maybe I can be a little bit more of a resource myself since I have been here a year now. Obviously I'm not an expert, but just someone else in the local area to maybe help you out. But I'm gonna go get changed since I'm just chilling in PJs basically at this point and go get ready to go outside and show you guys what my plans are for this year. So. See you in a second. <laughs> you can stop rubbing your head on the seeds there, Missy. visually for both myself and for you guys. What baby, I know. Mommy's ditching you. Alright, so here's the garden. I'm gonna put all my seeds and stuff down real quick. Alright, so as I was telling you guys, Somehow, we still have 
onions coming in through here. So I'm going to hopefully harvest those today with you guys. See what we have, or maybe I'll leave some of them just to use the tops for a green onion. And then here's also that rosemary that somehow is still going quite strong, even though I have not done anything with it for months now. So good on it for surviving this long. And yes, as you can tell, all of the compost and stuff that was under here has much sunken down and is in need of replenishment because when I first started the line was kind of up here. And since then, with all of decomposition and everything, it has now dropped several inches. So, need to refill all of the garden beds. And speaking of things I need to do, if you can tell, I also need to go in and trim off all of the dead pieces of my fruit trees because they're in need of some desperate pruning since they're all quite dead. A good way to tell is if it's bendable or not, like this obviously just broke my hand, which means he needs to go. I think this entire front section right here is probably pretty dead. So, gotta trim him up and gotta trim my other apple tree up because he's also looking quite rough, as you can tell. But let's get going with the garden because I am running out of battery, unfortunately. All right, camera battery officially died on that last one. So switching over to the phone. Hopefully it's okay, but whoop, I have to use the phone or the tripod as a way to hold this down. So as I was trying to explain to you guys inside, this is my current plan for basically most of the early spring planting. So this left hand bed that I was telling you guys is these two over here. These two before were my summer squash beds, but this year we're going to transfer those into basically just our greens beds. And then going back to this, if y'all can see that okay. I was telling you how that big middle bed was all peppers last year. So this year we're gonna make that back square line of footage into both cabbage and Brussels sprouts since those are new to me and I'm not sure how much we'll really need. And then a whole bunch of peppers here in the middle. So for reference, this over here on the left hand side, is that pepper bed us on oh my goodness what the heck well we have spinach that is coming through even though i haven't planted it what the heck okay i am really confused because i guess this is left over from last year i tried to do a winter session of greens and nothing ever happened but now as i was showing you guys we have spinach baby little baby spinaches even though it's over six months later, so I guess that's a happy little surprise. All right, guys, let's give you the tour. I'm sorry, the lighting is kind of atrocious. Again, you're working with the outside. It's unpredictable, but let me flip you guys around here in a second. I have laid all of these seeds out for reference now. And I have most of these still to work with, and then I have all of these right here. So flip you around and let's go. All right, so as I was telling you guys, this left hand bed will be lettuce. We have three different kinds. This one I've used before. It worked well in Kentucky. We're going to use up what's left of it because there's really not that much. Some romaine and then a mixture of gourmet lettuce. So this one is a mixture of, let's see, Romaine, red salad bowl, red romaine, tango bib, and Lola Rosa. So we have that. We'll see how long these grow for. Maybe we'll just harvest them early and then take them out. Then we have where the spinach is supposed to be. So we'll have some, a row of arugula. So one foot of arugula right here. And then the other three foot section will be this Bloomsdale spinach. I have seriously so many of these, it's not even funny. There's just a mixture between this brand and then this as well. So spinach bed, and then again, I was telling you this used to be the peppers. We've moved peppers to just right here, opposed to the whole thing. So I'm gonna leave this open for all of our summer squash. Then if I hop in the bed for you, 
here on that middle square foot lineage, we have the cayenne. So one square foot of that, I'll probably plant four and then thin it to whatever works, hopefully just two. Some jalapeno, again, we'll plant four and then thin it out. Same with our cherry red peppers and the poblanos. So square foot of each of those, starting with four plants and thinning it down. We'll have one row of the mixed bell peppers, again, planting four and then thinning to see what grows. You never know with seeds, especially when they're older, like mine are. Same with our green peppers. We have the cabbage, which will take quite a bit of time from what I saw. I think it could take up to 100 days, potentially. And then we have our Brussels sprouts. I'm actually so excited to try this. Honestly, I love Brussels sprouts. So it'll be a first for me to grow this. I don't know how long it takes. I think these were somewhere in the range of like 70-ish days and they keep producing. So we have those. If I get myself back out of my garden bed, take you back over. Again, we have our lovely trellis. Hopefully I can see it to its full capacity this year and not let all the pests kill my plants because that was truly devastating last year. And then over here, as I said, we have the random onion plants that have survived. This first square foot will be Swiss chard. I don't even know if I've ever tried Swiss chard in my whole life other than when you do like a rhubarb pie. So we'll see how that goes. Just a little bit of radish because I'm not a huge radish person as neither is Sam. So we'll mostly just use that as a um, salad topper more than likely. We'll do a linear row of orange carrots and then we'll do another linear footage row. So one foot, two foot, and a line of the cosmic purple carrots. And then right now we'll just do chives right here. I might end up doing more chives down here. We go through so much of those, quite frankly. And then this will be just my mixture of all the herbs. So we still have our rosemary kicking. I'll probably do some basil right here because we used a whole bunch. I even had, I think, three or four rows right here last year and ended up drying enough to use this whole winter season. So I was pretty proud of that. And then over here, I'll probably add in maybe a little bit of catnip for autumn, some oregano, anything else that we really want, I'll mix into here. And then, as I told you guys, I'm hoping to do a lovely line of flowers all the way through here, pretty much. And I'll put some stepping stones to get to all of the trees. So again, we have apple tree, peach tree. Right here is my biggest, I think it's a wine sap apple tree. And then apple tree over there. And then there are a blueberry bush, raspberry bush, and then black raspberries. Over here, I don't know how much will come back. We are working with what we got, so we'll see. Honestly, he's not looking too good right now, but you never know. And then blueberries. So I'll put stepping stones to get to each of those plants, but I want to do a full massive bed around this tree and over to our fence of flowers. So it's good for the pollinators, it's beautiful, and it's good for my budget because then I'm not buying flowers out. All right guys, so as of right now, that is my comprehensive plan for all of early spring. I'll probably go find some flowers at either the garden centers, go find some flower bulbs to start off with and then mix in a bunch of the seeds for later in the summer. So a lot of them I saw you don't plant till about May around here. And then otherwise, I'll just keep you guys updated. Again, this is episode one of all of our gardening fun. Here soon, I will film a plant with me video and maybe talk you guys through what else I've figured out since then. But that is it for now. Thank you so very much for watching. Stick around for all the gardening fun. So like and subscribe if you want to keep watching and I'll see you guys here soon. Bye.